What's going on, Core Kids? I'm super excited about today's Core Kids Survival TV episode. And look how cute Bella is. She's got herself a nice little outfit on. Girl, you look cute. Show us how cute you look. Yep. Show them, show them, show them, show them. Do -do 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 -do. Bella, do you love Core Kids Survival TV? Okay, lick my hand if you love Core Kids Survival TV. Bella, I thought you did like Core Kids Survival Let's give you a try. Lick my hand if you love Core Kids Survival TV. Okay, we'll get back to her later. She's in one of her moods again. But welcome everybody. Do me a favor, please click like, share, subscribe, turn the bell on, ding. So that way you never miss one of our episodes and we are here every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Set your alarm, get yourself up and make sure that you are watching all of our Core Kid Revival TV episodes. Tell me in the comments, have you been enjoying these? What are some topics that you would like me to teach on? Let me know in the comments or even email us at corekidsrevivaltv uh, at gmail.com. Email us and say, hey, Miss Jenny, would you teach on this? Would you please teach us this? And I'm going to go through those and we're going to see if we can get some of those teachings done for you because I love you and I want you to be trained and equipped. I have an announcement for you today. We have Core Kids Revival Summer Camp coming up this summer, our very first one, and we have almost a thousand kids that are gonna be attending, kids and teenagers, so it is gonna be amazing. We're going after the presence of God like never before, and I believe signs, miracles, wonders, salvation, repentance, holiness, healings, deliverance, everything that God has for us is gonna take place at this Core Kids Revival Summer Camp. And I want you to know we're doing something special. Right now we have Sponsor A Kids Worship. What that means is we want every child that's attending to be able to get a worship flag. Flags are beautiful. They're talked about in the Bible. And I want you guys to learn about that. So we actually have a flag class where you actually can learn about what the banner of the Lord is. And so we wanna sponsor the kids. It's $20 to sponsor a kid so they can get a flag. They'll pick it up the first day of revival. And I think we have several hundred sponsored and we need the rest of the children to be sponsored. So the link is below. Please, 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 if you can, sponsor at least one child so that they can get a flag. I'm not getting any of this money. It's all going to their flag. And our beautiful sister Liliana at Set Up Blaze um, Ministry is the one that is making them, and it is amazing. All right, so let's get into today's lesson. Do you have your swords? I've been, I've been using the big, the big heavy sword lately. I feel like I need to really get some devils. I need the big one. Amen. Today we're going to talk all about understanding dreams. Dreams are a very unique thing. Here's the thing I want to tell you about dreams. Everybody dreams. Everybody dreams. That means Christians dream and people who are not Christians, non-believers, they dream. People that have other religions, they dream. All humans dream, okay? Some of you go, I don't dream, I don't remember my dreams. Well, it doesn't mean you don't dream, it just means that, again, you don't remember your dreams, right? That's all. So, but we all dream. Here's the thing that makes us different from non-Christians. Christians have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in them. And so because we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, in our dreams, God has the ability to actually release messages to us, his children. This is one of the ways that God speaks to us if we're listening. And so dreams are an important part of a Christian's life. And God wants to activate that in us so that he can be the one speaking to us. Not the devil, not your flesh, not your pizza dream. That's what I call dreams that are just wacky because you had pizza. Not your cupcake dreams. That's because you ate too much chocolate and your dream's kind of like all over the place. The dog starts talking in your dream. He's walking around in high heels. You're like, oh, that was a, that was a chocolate dream. That was a pizza dream. I'm talking about the dreams where you wake up and you're like, 
something is really happening in my dream. And you feel like this is important enough to tell a parent about. And so today we're gonna get right into it and we're gonna look at somebody's life in the Bible and what happened with their gift of dreams and how the Lord began to use it for his glory and what God wants to do in your life. All right, well, before I get to that, actually, I want to share this really awesome resource with you. Um, this is a book, it's called The Way of Dreams and Visions, Symbol Dictionary by Colette Toach. And it's a really amazing book. If you want biblical Bible verses to help you discern and interpret what dreams mean. And of course, the main interpreter of all dreams is the Holy Spirit. Type that in the comments, the Holy Spirit. You need to ask the Holy Spirit before you run to a book, before you run to the internet, even before you run to mom and dad. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, God, reveal to me what this means, what you are trying to speak to me. But I really like this book because after I pray and ask the Lord to reveal, I will go and look up different things that I had a dream about because I love that there's scriptures in here. Something that I wanted to read in the beginning of this book is it tells you how to read it and everything like that. It says, it's a common mistake for people to misinterpret people and objects in their dreams as the real thing. So if you have a dream and you're like, oh my gosh, I had a dream that my teacher was pregnant. Your, your, your lady teacher was pregnant. And then you go, you run to class and you're like, I had a dream you're pregnant. You're gonna have a baby soon. That teacher is gonna have to send you to the principal's office and be like, mm-mm, no, I'm, mm -mm. She's gonna look at you, she's like, I'm 75 years old. What do you mean I'm gonna have a baby soon? So no, many times people will have a dream and they will think, Whatever happens in the dream is exactly what is going to happen in real life. But you need to understand that God many times speaks to us in symbolic ways. And so if I have a dream about somebody being pregnant, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go run to that person and say, you're pregnant with a real baby. God might be speaking to me about something in my own life that I could be carrying something uh, that he wants me to birth. Maybe it's a ministry. Maybe I'm going to start a business. Maybe there's an idea that's growing inside of me and that God is going to bring forward or maybe it's in somebody that I know and God is doing great things and there's something new coming there's something fresh coming those are the ways that you kind of just you have to look at the dream and go what does this mean in my life if it's a teacher that's pregnant what does the teacher mean in my life you know, so a lot of times for me, a teacher would mean somebody that's speaking into me, somebody that is able to teach me, somebody that is able to pour into me, or maybe the teacher that God has inside of me, he's raising up. So there's a lot of different explanations, right? Oh my gosh, we could talk about this all day. But I want you guys to know that um, when you see things in your dream, and if it's about other people, sometimes it's not about the person, sometimes it's about you. God could be giving you dreams to help you navigate your life and help speak to you. So you need to have the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about what happened to Daniel. Daniel had a beautiful gift of dreams. He was able to see visions from the Lord. And in his day, there was a king, a very mean king, a very violent king, and his name was King Nebuchadnezzar. And this king, has a dream one day. And in the dream, all of these crazy symbols were happening and he woke up and it troubled him. It concerned him, it worried him. And so the king is calling for, bring in the magicians, bring in the sorcerers, bring in the astrologers, bring in the enchanters. And he brings in all of these witchcraft, magic people to interpret the dream. And he says, I want you to tell me what my dream means. And they said, yes, king, we will tell you what the dream means. And he says, wait a minute, stop right there. I'm not gonna tell you 
what I dreamed. I want you, since you're so good with magic and sorcery, then you use your magic and sorcery to figure out what I dreamed and then you tell me what it means. And if you don't do it, then you're done. And he threatened them with some crazy stuff. It's wild. And so they were nervous. They're sitting there worried, shaking in their boots. Oh no. He said, King, you asked something that's too hard. No one can tell you what you dreamed. Not even the gods know that. Not e nobody knows that but you. This is too difficult for us. And the king was not happy with that. And he issued a death decree for people. And it was not a good situation. But all of a sudden, Daniel, the man of God, gets involved. Somebody brings Daniel and he gets to go before the king, this crazy king. And he says, I'll be able to interpret your dream. And he had already prayed. See, Daniel was a man of God. Daniel wasn't just leaning on Google to get him through. Daniel was leaning on God to get him through. And so he had already prayed and lo and behold, God gave him the revelation, told him what the dream meant. It hit his spirit. And when he went to open his mouth, he said, this is what you dreamed. You've had a dream of, and he began to list everything. The king's eyes get big. He literally told him what the dream was and he interpreted it and said, this is what this means. And after he was done, the king threw himself down on the ground, face down in front of Daniel. He began to give him honor and he began to place him in high position and he gave him gifts and he put him as a ruler over the providence in Babylon. It was amazing. And all of a sudden Daniel goes from nobody knowing him and, and just being quiet to being raised up to be a man, a leader in a nation. God will use your dreams. God will use your visions. Don't think that you're just having random dreams. No, the Holy Ghost is speaking to kids in dreams right now. You know, the Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And then it starts to talk about dreams. And it says, and your young men, will have visions and your old men will dream dreams. And so in the last days we see that visions and dreams are going to begin to increase and come forth to show us the way, to tell us about what God is doing. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that your dreams will be activated and that God will lead you and guide you in your dreams. You know, the Bible says in Habakkuk, it says, write the vision and make it plain. When you have a dream, don't blow it off and just think you're gonna remember it. Let God know, I am serious about this dream because you gave it to me and it's a gift. And if I get a gift from God, I'm gonna take care of the gift. So I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna show God I care. God, if you give me a dream, I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna care for it. And so write it down, keep those dreams. If you don't know what it means, go and pray. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Or two, you can ask your parent, if they're a believer, a spirit-filled believer, then you ask them what they think or can they pray with you about it. And then you can also get a good resource like this book right here. I don't really recommend kids going to the internet and typing in what does this mean in my dream because I've done that you guys oh it was a mess because all the internet wants to pull up is new age mess I'm serious so I stay away from the Google interpreter I'd rather have the Holy Ghost I'd rather have a good Bible scripture that can interpret it for me and of course your parents or even somebody that's in the core kids that can help to interpret. And if you don't know, write it down and ask God. I'm gonna keep it right here until you tell me. 
Right now, I want you to stretch your hands towards the screen. Everybody, right now, stretch your hands towards the screen. God is going to touch your dream realm in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been attacked in your sleep. Some of you have had your dreams where they it's like they're being stolen, where God's giving you dreams, but it's like you can't remember them for anything. So we just command in the name of Jesus for the devil to take their hands off of dreams, off of visions right now in Jesus' mighty name. We ask God that you would increase dreams and messages from heaven, from your voice, God, to come to the children right now. Come to that young man. Come to that young lady in the name of Jesus Christ. We command, we command our spirits to hear the voice of God and we refuse to hear from the devil. We say we close the door to every demon, every demonic attack in our dreams. We say, no, we will not allow it in the name of Jesus. We will only receive from the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see and hear what God gives you in your dreams. Make sure you write it down. And if you get a good one, send it to us. We want to know. We want to celebrate with you. And send it to CourtKidsRevivalTV at gmail.com along with your videos, your artwork, your pictures, whatever you'd like to send us. I love you guys so much. And I want you to stay tuned because we're going to show you some amazing video clips. And I will see you next time for Court Kids Revival TV.